this man on the BT couch. Brent Butt is here. Welcome. I like that. I'm helping to make the morning beautiful. You are. I, I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. I'd I, buy it. I help to make your morning beautiful. And you could make our Thursday evening beautiful too. Yeah, I'm What's going of, on? I'm doing uh, my. I've started my live stand-up tour. It's a huge tour. I haven't done this kind of month-long haul across the country uh, is, since before Cornegas days. Really? So the tour started in Ottawa, and uh, my next show is here at home at the Vogue Theater on Thursday which at the old fantastic. Vogue. It's a beautiful place to play. It, honestly, that is going to be fun to be a spectator at. Great seats through the, uh, the you know, the whole was, vibe. Actually, a little bit of trivia that. I mean, it's very trivial. Bring it but on. I was actually the first live performer at the Vogue Theater when it stopped being a movie house in the, in the early 90s, 93, I think it was, because I opened for the kids in the hall. They were the first live act to play there uh, after it stopped being a movie house, and I was their opening act. Full circle for you, Brent. Here it comes, full circle. Full circle I'm for I'm really you. ballooning up, aren't I? This is all from the Super Bowl yesterday. <laughs> I was 160 pounds before the Super Bowl started yesterday. Little chicken wings, or is it guacamole? Oh, yeah. what do you <laughs> little think? chicken wings. Uh -huh. Ridiculous amount of food, and there was not a single thing that I ate yesterday that had any nutritional value whatsoever. That is a prerequisite, though. It was yes. all just like ice cream and cookies and deep oh. fried stuff. I was like a little, I was like a little happy baby panda just stuffing food into my face. I'm hanging out with you now. Nice one. There's a baby panda. I, There's a baby panda I held the bowl in my feet. <laughs> it's like a baby panda. So were you a Seahawks fan? Well, I'm not a big NFL guy. I'm a big CFL guy. Mm -hmm. Riders, your Grey Cup champion, Saskatchewan Riders. Oh dear. We're going to have to cut this interview short. <laughs> I'm I wore out. my rider hat yesterday to the game just to make anger some people. <laughs> but um, I have a lot of friends who are Seahawks fans, so I was uh, pulling for the Seahawks. So my friends would be happy and not cranky, and difficult to be around. Because they get that way. Hotheads. Talk about your Canuck fans. Holy yeah. mad, bitter people I know. currently. There's a lot of, lot of fair-weatherness going on in the Canuck yeah. fan world. It bothers me. Me too. People are like, oh, I love the Canucks unless they lose three in a row, then I'm going to never watch hockey again. Well, way to be a fan. Is that what's wrong with Vancouver fans? Is that well, where we get a tough know, wrap across the league? There's, yeah, that's part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's too many, too much fair weatherness going on. you got to stick with them. And you can grouse and you can complain if things aren't going well mm -hmm. and offer your, your hollow suggestions. People always go, Here, I'll tell you what's wrong with them right now. Here's what Torch should do. Yeah, and you're like, have you ever been involved in hockey in any level beyond Bantam? Bantam B hockey? No, but I do understand completely how the... Uh, you know, the unrestricted free agency works. Really. You need to cycle more down low. Yeah, they get a lot of that kind of buzzwords. Mm. John Tortorella actually just two minutes ago on Twitter, because uh, he hasn't been able to talk to the team for 15 days, just said, I apologize first and foremost to the players and the fans. That was not a good idea and yeah. tough last couple of weeks. Your thoughts on Tortorella? Sure. Well, I mean, I, I get where he's coming from because it's hard to, you know, it's hard to say to your team, now play with some discipline. When you're like trying to chew your way through the coaches, the other coaches' door, so you can beat them up, you know, in between periods. Dude, so it was a bit of a psychotic episode. Mm. So, but I, <laughs> but I think it's, uh, you know, he's got a he's got a rap for being a hothead. But I think it's uh, I think it's heartfelt his apology. I think he does understand. Look, that was made that maybe wasn't cool. Um, but I think that I think it's going to galvanize the team. That's a word, right? That is a word. Team. Good, that's a word. Good buzzword. Um, <laughs> galvanize. Yeah, and they're going to they're going to cluster around, and they'll be stronger for it. Adversity it can often steal you. It can steal your resolve. Go, to win. Brent. I don't what? Know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Do you want to go see Brent at the Vogue Theater on Thursday evening? Now is your chance for a four pack of tickets. Contest at btvancouver.ca. There was a huge debate over what the subject line was. Oh, here's your movie. Here's my movie. No clue. You can go, uh, if you want to see the whole trailer, you can go to my website, brentbutt.com. The trailer's up there. We, we had the world premiere at the Whistler Film Festival. Response was amazing. Better than I could have ever hoped. It's a, it's a comedic mystery thriller. A comedic mystery thriller featuring one of Canada's funniest men, full stop. Thank go see you. Brent Butt live Thursday at the Vogue. There you go. Contest at btvancouver.ca subject line, Brent. Brent. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me.